Hey guys, Jess here. And today we're gonna have a chat about a, a very exciting watch that I had the opportunity to get hands on with, not in the studio here, but in the store. And it was the Grand Seiko Spring Drive uh, Chronograph GMT. It's, it's a lot of watch, let me just say that. Uh, it's a limited edition 60th anniversary watch. So as you can imagine, um, there's a few bells and whistles on it uh, and Grand Seiko have, I think, how would you describe it? Turned it into a flagship epic watch. So we're gonna talk about that today and go through a little bit of detail. I haven't got that much experience with Grand Seiko. It's, it's a funny one, right? Cause it's one of those watches that before I became a watch enthusiast uh, and a little bit more informed as a watch consumer, I, I had heard of Grand Seiko, but I hadn't really paid much attention to them in the sense that I'm gonna be really flat out honest here and you guys know I do that a lot. Um, because it had Seiko in the title, I kind of um, went, really? like. Uh, 10, 15, $20,000 for a watch that's got Seiko in the title. Man, how wrong was I? Honestly, so naive. Anyway, let's get into it. The thing about this watch is it's, it's quite extraordinary. So we'll talk a little bit about design, features, um, performance of the timepiece. And of course, I'm gonna look at notes for this because you guys know, not a watch expert. Uh, it's all part of the learning for me here and getting to understand the watch better. I also want to talk a little bit about my overall impressions of the watch. Uh, would I buy it? Why wouldn't I buy it? If I would buy it, you know, all those kind of things. Is it a grail watch? Everything. But let's not forget to do a quick wrist check while we're at it, shall we? So <laughs> I have, I've got my Panerai Luminor Due. It's a 45 millimeter watch. Uh, they don't make these anymore in the 45 millimeter, which for me, I feel is like a sweet spot. 44 is cool, but 45, just a little bit of a point of difference. Um, I love this watch. Now I know this is kind of like a fake Panerai for some people in the sense that, you know, it's 30 meters water resistance, which some people say is totally fucking useless in particular because it's a Panerai and they're meant to be dive watches. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> because I wouldn't take this diving. It's too elegant. The whole purpose of this watch is to streamline the profile, bring it down in terms of the thickness, which it does really, really well. And it's just, it's a simple, elegant watch to wear. It's nice and light, but it still feels like you're wearing a watch and it's very comfortable. Uh, you guys know I've got a PAM 422. It's a 47 millimeter, which is also pretty comfortable, but it can get heavy at times. This, you don't have that problem. Uh, it fits under shirts really well for the gents or ladies out there who wear work shirts in particular. Uh, I used to wear them a lot. There's a lot of problems getting shirts uh, under the cuff, particularly if you're wearing French cuffs. Uh, so if we go with a little bit of history, uh, it was born in 1960. And it was, it was something that came with the first Grand Seiko watch. And it represented the ambition of Grand Seiko and the king of watches, meaning they wanted to be precise, durable, and beautiful. And I don't know about you guys, but if that was their uh, uh, mantra or mission statement, uh, they've done that. Because if you actually look at Grand Seiko watches when you go into the store, they are all of those things. In fact, they are some of the most intricately and perfectly finished watches I think I've ever laid my eyes on, which is saying a lot. Yeah. Um, look, they say the lion mic symbolizes the inner strength of Grand Seiko and it inspires its watchmakers to craft the very best timepieces. I mean, I know that sounds like, you know, it's probably website spiel, but you know, I kind of like the idea of the lion and you know, what it invokes for them in terms of being essentially a mascot for their brand. And I think, you know, it works. It totally works. Design of the Grand Seiko 60th anniversary limited edition spring drive chronograph GMT. You can't say that too fast 10 times over. Whew, it's a mouthful, that's for sure. 
But the coolest part of this watch, I think, is it takes inspiration for the, in particular, the, the leather band um, for the strap from the Japanese samurai armor. Uh, okay, so you probably don't know this about me. I mean, you guys know that I love the military and all that kind of stuff. So I love the art of war. I love the history of reading about war. I don't love wars, don't get me wrong, but the history around them. So the samurai to me, and obviously, you know, I've watched the odd samurai film. So understanding that link between the samurai warrior and what they've done with the design of this watch is really kind of cool and interesting. They've, they've gone with the Sengoku period. Probably haven't pronounced, pronounced that correctly, but we're used to that by now, right guys? And it it's meant to kind of talk to their continuous improvement spirit and, you know, um, innovation and, and just giving a nod back to their history and where they've come from. And I think they do that really well. The samurai armor of the time was designed to provide protection and also, believe it or not, an aesthetic appeal. The armor was often made of iron and or leather and was designed to be flexible and lightweight, but also providing effective protection against weapon used in battle. The key feature of the armor was the various types of decorative elements, such as the color lacing, gold or silver figurary work, and even intricate designs etched into the material. Now the decorations were designed to symbolize the wearer's status, rank, and also their personal preference. In the watch, the bracelet has been fashioned with like these um, intricate uh, grooves and it's a distinctive blue color known as Katsuiro, and it's the favorite color of the samurai and a representation of bravery. So I think, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but that's pretty awesome and extraordinary. I love the idea that like the, the design of the actual armor itself was what sort of talked to their status and rank and also personal preference, and that they've been able to draw those design elements from the armor into the bracelet. Having seen the bracelet up front, it definitely kind of packs a punch in that respect. And understanding its origins and what it's based on, it's even more exciting to kind of understand that and look at it when you get your hands on it. The bracelet, there's grooves and they're applied with rose gold to reflect the strength and dignity of the armor that has been used in battle over a long period. On to the case. that also kind of talks to lines it's angled towards like a soft fit on the wrist but i'm going to be honest with you because it's gold it had an enormous amount of heft to it so whilst it angles to kind of fit the wrist yeah it certainly does but it it's i don't think personally it's going to be a watch for like the daily wearer which arguably it's probably not meant to be right given how ostentatious it is but yeah, it's, it's not the most comfortable fit. Let's just put it that way. For obvious reasons, it's gold. It weighs a lot. Well, they say kind of represents the mane of the lion, which I actually, now that they say that, you can, you can see it in the detail of the dial. Now, one thing I've learned very quickly about Grand Seiko is the incredible distinctive nature and intricate detail that they do with their dials that makes them kind of stand out really beyond any other kind of watch out there. Now that's a huge call, I know, but honestly, they really do. Like they are absolutely unbelievably stunning. Like, and it's, it's part, one of the main features in my view of Grand Seiko and what has it stand out from other brands. They really do understand aesthetic and what that means to the design of a watch. And I love the fact that they name, they name their watches and they base their watch design on an element in Japan, whether it's a lake or a tree or a cherry blossom or something like that. I think that's so fantastic and such a, um, a unique design element for a watch that it just kind of makes me love this brand a little bit more each time I, I read and find out a little bit about them.
So the we've got the main of the dial here on this watch. So it's this flying kind of beautiful royal blue that you've got going on with, and it pops with the gold, right? And it just makes this watch look unbelievable. It's got the classic sort of sweeping, um, or I think you should probably, I should just me, I think. In terms of the dial, it's got that gliding motion with the second hand, which is about the spring drive. So let's talk a little bit about the, um, the spring drive because it is unique to Grand Seiko and it is something that I've only just recently learnt about, of course. Or it's a mechanism powered by a main spring that drives a traditional mechanical movement. Although instead of a traditional escapement used in the mechanical movement, a spring drive uses a different mechanism to regulate the speed at which the gears turn. The regulating system of the spring drive uses a quartz oscillator which generates an electric charge. The electrical charge is then used to control an electromagnetic brake that is connected to the gear train of the mechanical movement. The electromagnetic brake slows down the rotation of the gear train, allowing the watch to keep time with incredible precision. In this case, plus or minus 0.5 seconds a day. Okay, so that's a spring drive, which up until before doing research for this, honestly, I didn't really understand it or know what it meant. But a hybrid mechanical slash quartz watch, I think, I mean, it's pretty cool. I can see how some people might think it's somewhat of an abomination, um, but not me, no. <laughs> I don't discriminate. Uh, I think that that ingenuity in and of itself is pretty extraordinary and good on the Japanese for figuring that out, of course. Uh, <clears throat> the home of the quartz movement. <laughs> so yeah, it kind of makes sense that they blend the traditional Swiss movement, if I can put it that way, with kind of their invention of the quartz movement and just kind of make it better. So basically they've made the precision of the quartz movement blend to the mechanical watch to kind of, like I said, improve it. Uh, it's pretty cool. My thoughts on this watch. So as I said to you, I don't have it here with me. It's a $66,000 Australian watch. I'm not buying it. Uh, because it's $66,000, yes, I can't afford that. And B, if I was paying $66,000, I'm probably not gonna buy this watch anyway, but I still loved it. Like I thought the grandeur of this watch was spectacular. It's a showpiece watch. I kind of feel, and my mate said this, and, and I, I totally agree with him, Jamie, my mate was like, <clears throat> it kind of looks like something the head of the Yakuza would wear, 100%. Totally does. Um, and it's, and I mean, for him, that would be a daily beater, but for the mere mortals such as us, no, not at all. It would be a statement piece to wear out on a special occasion. And I just don't want to spend 66 grand on something like that. But I can appreciate the beauty and the majesty of the design around it. And it, like, the bracelet is just as beautiful as the watch. And, you know, the, the design elements of why they've made the bracelet that way, I mean, it's extraordinary to think that it's not just about the watch and the dial and the case, you know, and, and how the even the, the chronograph on it looks with the pushes and everything, like that's also very traditional, but it's, it's also about the bracelet. Like it's kind of not that watch you're gonna buy, like you put your horror strap or your different Panerai straps on a Panerai, like this is, a full package and it would just look odd if you took that you know that art piece of a bracelet off and put something else on it like it's meant to be just all together it really was a joy to see and I thank the Sydney store Grand Seiko store for letting me go in there and get hands on with it and you know um, play around with it even though I wasn't gonna buy it um, and I'm pretty sure they knew that and they just humored me anyway and they knew I'd probably do a video and they're happy for that as well so thank you for that but like I said the, the main negative for me is ostentatious really heavy makes total sense with the fact that it's made of gold so don't get me wrong I understand why it's heavy but just a little bit bulky and uncomfortable on the wrist from that point of view but it's not really a huge negative uh, in the sense that it really is a st 
stunning, crazy, crazy watch. And if you get the chance to check it out in person, please do because I think you'll be very excited by the look and the feel of it and what they've achieved. And I think for you know a 60th anniversary limited edition watch, it's definitely gonna make a bunch of hardcore watch collectors and enthusiasts very happy to have it in the collection. Uh, and it's, I think it would definitely be worth having in the collection. In particular, if you are a Grand Seiko fiendish fan, I think you'd have to have this one in the collection. <sighs> Do me a favor, like, subscribe, tell your friends about me. Uh, <laughs> let me know in the comments if you've seen this watch, if you wanna see this watch and what your thoughts were. And until next time, have an awesome week.